Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, you can see the ocean, too. Mm-hmm. You love already? Oh yeah. Oh girl, look at that. Look at that stuff. Look at that. Oh yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Wait, let me go on and share it to my page. Yeah. Share, like, and comment. Oh, oh there we go. Hey Calvin, how's it going? Right. I heard something. Okay. Okay. Bear with us for a moment. I mean, it's really beautiful out there. It's a great day to be at the beach. Thank you. Great. Yes, I am ready. Great, great. Good afternoon, everybody. As we said on yesterday that we were going live at 2.30, and you know it is 2.30. I'm Melinda Alford. I'm here with Serena K of La Rock Beauty. Um, and Hi. Serena, if you could just um, let us know what you do. Let us know. Give, give us a little brief description of what you do. Okay, so I'm the owner of La Rock Beauty Lash and Brow Bar in Somerville, South Carolina. I also have two additional locations, one in North Charleston inside of Charleston Women's Wellness Center and one also in Savannah, Georgia. Now look, this thing was really a last minute thing. It wasn't really anything that we planned. No, we didn't plan it. Right, we did not plan this. So we're actually real women about to have some real conversation because yesterday morning we were kind of, I guess, just talking about the different struggles and successes yeah of, of being an entrepreneur right of being an entrepreneur and I felt that we were sharing information that was important to share with other um, entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs and there were some things that Serena was saying you know that really touched me to my heart things that we could relate on that we really don't talk about um, no. that that people are afraid to talk about and I mean, I guess I'm, I'm kind of wondering why are we so used to discussing all the successes, but not the struggle. Yes. And not, not the, the hard part, like especially when it comes to being an entrepreneur, being a, a business owner on your own, not a part of a company. It's just you starting from the ground up. Right. And, and it's not all, and that honestly, it's not all, you know, what is it? What's the word I want to say? Glamorous and yes, yes it's, not, it's not glamorous. And I guess I'm trying to figure out too, like why do you feel that women think it's women? And I say women. I'm, yeah. I'm speaking specifically on women entrepreneurs. I know that there's some males out there, and it probably happens with the men as well. But yeah. like for us, why do you think it? Like we feel it's so necessary for us to put on, like we're doing so well, and and we don't share like the struggles, but we want the help. Yeah, but you want the help, right. but you don't want to tell people how hard it really is. Right. And Or people have this notion that when you start a business and you are successful, that it's, it's like that. It right. happens just like that. And, you know, it's not, they don't know the background of it. Right. They don't know how much you have to put in, how some nights you lose sleep. You know, you're up from right. 5 o'clock in the morning. You don't go to sleep to 2 o'clock in the morning the next day. Right. But you're constantly working. You know, right. they see you out and you look good. But they don't realize how much is behind that. Right. Do you feel that um, as women that we would support each other a little more if we were able to share or show our vulnerable, our vulnerability, vulnerability? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> during during that process, um, you know, do you think that we would get the support that we needed? You hold know? on. Hold on one second. Just give me one. Second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh yes. Yeah. So, so anyway. Um, so like I said, I thought it was like really important, you know, for us to, to share uh, the information on what it is, you know, to struggle or not necessarily struggle, but the challenges. Because one of the things that I started thinking about, even with this, before we started doing this, is that we'll be so quick to create a GoFundMe account for the dead. 
but we won't create a GoFundMe account to birth success. Yes, that's true. For the living. Like, we won't create GoFundMe accounts to to bring, you know, forth life in our businesses. And, and, and why, like, like, why are we not doing that? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. I think it's more people, they have this notion that yet they don't want people to know that they're struggling. They want people to see that it's, it's you know, everything is perfect. And it, I mean, I understand that's your personal business, but sometimes if you speak to the right people, you can, you don't have to feel like, cause of course, there's some things you shouldn't tell people. You don't need, everyone doesn't need to know your struggle. Everyone doesn't need to know what you're going through. But you need to have a support system that you can go to and you can say, okay, well, I'm having this problem. Is there any way that you think that you can help? Or is there anything that you, any suggestions that you would make right. to, for me to get to the next step? Don't be ashamed of that. But I'm not saying get on Facebook and start a GoFundMe account right. and tell people your business right. and let people know all your secrets and everything of right. how you have become successful, but you still need that little extra kick or that little extra help. No, I'm saying to build a strong team. And with that team, you could do anything because everyone knows someone. Right. You know, they'll know someone who could reach out or someone who could help or maybe even information. There's a lot of help out there that doesn't have to do with people because you can't and again you can't talk to people who don't have a business stop right. talking to your family and friends who don't have a business they have no clue right of what you're going through they don't know right they have they don't know right they work a nine to five they get a check every two weeks or every week and that's their life right i i think i i um that's something that i've just recently realized as well you know um starting a real estate and and just you know walking off you know my job and, and then kind of trying to lay the expectation down on my family and friends as well just feeling some kind of way like you know why is it that everybody else is supporting and then i mean you want your family and friends to support you how you you you, you do and even if they can't do anything for you you want them to say something to you every once in a while or you mm -hmm. want to see it but at the same time is it unfair to put that type of pressure you know on on your closest family and friends because you know you say hey you can't look at the people who have who have 95s but then you know my, I look at my family and you know they have they have regular 95 yeah man. they look at so okay so I would say everyone wants their family to support them that's a given because you know you it's an accomplishment but when you look for you want them to support you but you can't look for them to validate what you're doing right so because they don't understand right so in in that case I had to learn that too but my family's really supportive right. my family is my cheerleaders so I unfortunately have had a good experience when it comes to that but there have been a lot of people who I'm no longer in touch with and I'm okay with that that didn't support me or it supported me before I did it but when I did it and I was great at it and I and I was successful wow they were gone wow so they see the dream they they like it they're, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, you could do it. But there were people who I thought would be there by my side throughout the whole thing that just saw my growth and saw how well I was doing and didn't want to be a part of it. That's how I took it. When you are no longer in contact with me, and I, yeah, then that, that's how I took it. Right, right. And it's okay because you know what? Everyone in your life right now is not going to be in your life a year, two years from now when it comes to your business. Right. They're not. They're not a part of that growth. They were there for that part when you started. And then when you moved on and you did what you needed to do and you have found your niche, they're not there anymore. And that's okay. Let them go. Right. And even when you let them go, you know, and, and this is the thing. This is how you know you've matured. Because, you know, and when I say you matured, I mean like us. Like how you know you've matured as a person. Because I know even with myself, um, like I said, I'm, I'm new to real estate, you know, and I've been selling these houses. And I didn't feel the need to pick up the phone and say you know what and talk to them right yes. it was like it was a gradual process it's like once you start growing mm -hmm. um the the people just start falling off they just start they shedding do. off and you know your visions are different your goals are different mm -hmm. and sometimes you know they they talk about the crabs in the barrel yes and <laughs> <laughs> right and you know i uh, sometimes people reference that as to people who don't want to um do do things outside of the box mm -hmm. um, or or people who have an idea and maybe other people don't want to 
join that idea because the other group of people are in a different mindset but sometimes to me the crabs in the barrel are are like there's this one main crab that's yeah. trying to take everybody you mm -hmm. know and really you think that there's a bunch of crabs trying to hang on but really there's this one crab mm -hmm. that's trying to you know grab all these people that are not ready to go yes right and we have to, I think as business owners we have to be careful of that as well as is, is grabbing on to people that are not ready to go and then here it is you become successful and they have now fallen yes. because you have let them go mm -hmm. and you know uh, sometimes people don't understand they have a responsibility for themselves correct right for themselves and they don't right. want to take that they right they feel like oh well you could have helped me or you should have told me how to do this listen and my friends will tell you I'm gonna show you or tell you what you need to do I'm only gonna tell you a couple times and then I'm done I, because I I think that the information I have to give is valuable and if you don't find it valuable because you're not implementing it why should I even care right. I love you the same right. but as far as business wise I'm not gonna take I'm not gonna bother with it because you have to when it comes to owning a business and wanting to be successful anybody could do this anybody can do this but only if you will because everybody doesn't have that drive right they don't have that you got to wake up and you have to just like you wake up to go shopping yesterday on Black Friday, right. that's the same way you have to be every day when it comes to your business. And don't get me wrong, some days you're gonna wake up and not wanna do it. Right. You wanna say, what am I doing? Oh my God, this is this is going wrong, this is going wrong. It doesn't matter. Right. If, this is your, if this is your dream, you gotta work for it. Anybody who's successful will tell you, they wanna quit five times a day. Yes. Five times a day. Yes. But you have to think of your why right. and why you started. And when I think about why I started, I didn't want to work for anybody else. I knew I, I knew what was for me was greater than what I was doing. Right. I sacrificed a lot in the last three years to be able to be in the place that I am. So I'm going to do what I have to do. So I, I know whether I'm successful or not, it's all on me. I right. can't put it on anybody else. So the work that you put in is the work you get out. Right. What? And then I know that this too is, is um, a touchy subject. You know mm -hmm. for people because sometimes people will say well you know you got it like that you can do it um you had the money like that you had the credit like that and they don't understand that there's a backstory behind it exactly. and like and you don't always have you know the credit like that, like or, or the money like that i know a lot of people like to get out in the forefront and like like they just pop, you know was just born you know you know no born this Baby way step. right born fabulous born yeah. you know able to start these businesses and maybe there are some people who can but what would you say to the people who don't have the finances who might not have the credit who has the desire who has the drive who has the ideas they have the ideas they want to start businesses but they don't have the means they don't have the know-how like what what would you I would, would you say to them? okay so I would tell them um look for a mentor look for and start small the more research you do, because it's out there, you can research it, um, about the type of business that you want. Right. See if it's a viable business. Right. Because they're, not all businesses or all ideas are gonna work. You have to make sure that it's gonna be something that you can have long-term, not just temporary right. or seasonal. Right. Um, I would say it doesn't take a lot. If you're working, the way that you can do it is first get, you know, get your LLC, your LLC, get your EIN with the with the federal government. That doesn't cost anything. That's free. Right. You can get your LLC. Now that's gonna co you're gonna have to pay to um, to register with the state. But don't do that until you have done all the legwork. Like do your your um, business plan. Figure out what you're gonna do. Figure out how who your your market is, and make sure that market is viable. Because if you get if you put all this money into registering with the state, building logo building your brand colors, doing your brand, it, and you don't have a, you don't have a customer base right. that you can go to, then it's all for nothing and it's wasted. Now, granted, you are working. I think that's the best time to do it. Instead right. of going shopping and going out to eat and going out to the club, put that money aside and put that towards your business fund. Right. But you need, I think everyone needs a mentor. Yes. Everyone needs a mentor. That's why I, I, I love that and that's why I wanna, I'm starting a mentorship program next year because there's a lot of people out here who don't have anyone that they can trust and they right. go to their friends not realizing your friends don't have your vision right they never will have your vision because they're not not everyone's an, an entrepreneur correct right so you need to be with like-minded people right because you drive each other right 
Now you now this this now she threw out she's starting this mentorship program on next year. Now you can't just throw that out there <laughs> and, then, and then not talk about it because you're you're absolutely correct. Let me tell you something. And let me tell you something about business minded people. You know, one of the one of the first things when I, I joined my brokerage, um, one of the first things that my broker said is, Hey, um, it, I advise you to get a coach. Like that that's one of the first things she said. Now mind you, she's my broker. Um, she could teach me everything that she knows about real estate, uh, about brokerages, and just how things work, yeah. how to operate the business. But she said, Melinda, everybody needs a coach. Mm -hmm. She said, I have a coach. And I totally agree with that because that's what I had done. I, I had gone out and I had got, I have, I have a coach. Yeah. Um, and then some people say, hey, you know, I can't afford a coach or, you know, but what you're saying is so important because it's the investment. Right. Yeah. Stop going to clubs. Stop doing the extra shopping. Stop buying all the food. Take that money and invest it in yourself. yourself. Because I, I've come to learn in the last few months is when I take the time to invest in myself, people see my value. Yes. And then they begin to invest in me yes, as well as an individual. That you know, but if true. I'm just out here like, yeah, I need this, I need that, or I want this, or I want that, but they don't see me investing in myself. They don't see the value in this exactly right but when i you know when i say hey you know i have a business coach or when i say things like i'm connecting with people or like how you and i are connecting right yeah. now like even in this conversation that we're having there's value in this you know exactly um so but but i say that to say you know what tell us about your mentoring program that you're going to so i i don't want to say too much because right. <laughs> but i am i have i have a mentee now um and we I've been mentoring her for a little over a year. And her, you guys will see stuff about her later on, probably later on next year. But I talked to her and I'm like, okay, so you, basically, she really is on her own. She can do everything. She really doesn't even, we still, we talk every day, she does our PR and everything, but I wanted to give that to someone else. So I'm gonna work with just a few people um, starting next year just to help them. And now the vetting process will be very, very, very difficult because I don't believe in wasting time. So I just wanna put that out there because that's important, um, but it's going to be worth it. Because if you, a lot of, like when you go to networking events and you talk to people, yeah. a lot of them, they they wanna do something, but they're like, oh, you know, but I don't know who, who I can trust. And again, trusting people with your ideas is very, very difficult because someone can take it. They can't do it like you. That's what I always try to tell people. If they took right. your idea, right. they're not you. They can't They can't implement it like you. So don't worry about those things. But I think if you have like a great, like an invention, don't say anything. Just keep that to yourself until you right. get a non-disclosure agreement with whoever's going to do it for you. But as far as going into business and being an entrepreneur, I think there's so many women that have so many good ideas and would be great business women, but they don't have the support. And that's what I want to be. Right. I want to be their support. So. Now, now. Serena, you have three locations. Yes. Right. And where are those locations? So, Somerville, um, South Carolina is my main location. I've, it's my main salon. And then I have a location inside of Charleston Women's Wellness Center, which is in North Charleston. And that's where I do my microblading and I do lashes. So, my, and ombre brows and micro needle. And then Savannah, Georgia, I also do microblading and lashes. So, those three locations and they if anyone wants to get information they can go to rockbeauty.com and go under scheduling you can see what's offered at each location right now what can we do to get a location in columbia south carolina i don't know, <laughs> wait, wait, I don't wait, know you're talking can, about that what, what can we do maybe there's somebody out there that's going to see this video that's watching right now uh, that would say that's saying hey you know what she's talking about entrepreneurship she's talking about helping you know uh, to mentor uh, women who want to start their own business maybe businesses there maybe there's somebody out there who knows in Charlotte who knows in Columbia that's saying hey I want to be a part of the La Rock beauty brand I want to bring La Rock beauty here what can I do to do that like is that a possibility I know that, I just threw that out, out there you know <laughs> but she she's a business-minded um, woman yes. so. that, is, that absolutely is a possibility they would have to contact me personally right um, and you can go if you go on the website it says contact us send in the info there right and then I you know and we could go from there but yeah that definitely is a possibility because my my 
how I look at things and how I see things is much bigger than what you see right now. Right. So this is just the beginning. Like I said before, I'm not done. Right. At all. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, and I know, I know, and like I said, you guys, this is very informal. This is, you know, um, we not rehearsed. <laughs> right. <laughs> These are real, this is a real conversation. We were having a real conversation, you guys, yesterday. Like a real conversation about about business and going into and going into business and the importance of branding. Yes. Like, can you touch on that? Like the importance of branding and how? Because sometimes some people think that branding is just, hey, I'm gonna create this name and I'm gonna put this name out here. I'm gonna put it out here in every post. You know, I, some some people do not understand what branding is and the importance of branding. Can you explain that, you know, yes. for, to our viewers? Yes. So branding is very important. Branding is what people see. That is your public reputation, how you look to the public. So I would say before you think about a color, a logo, and all those things, you need to know what your mission statement is and what you want to what you want the public to see when they look at you. If you want if you want to be the best hairstylist in where, wherever city you are, say Charleston, you need to think about how you want people to look at you, what your um, ideal client is, right. how, what, where they shop, what they do, what appeals to them. Build your brand about, around that. Right. Then you go to colors and you have to remember, don't just think about being local. You need to think about going much further than that. So think about long term. Don't think about just for the next year or two. Think about the next five to ten years. Because when you think that far ahead, then you, you'll never go wrong. And get feedback. Get feedback from people. Just say, How, what do you think of this? Or what do you think? You know, because go to people who, you could be standing in line at Marshalls. And you can say, oh, hey, have you ever heard of this company? What do you think of this? And people are very, especially if you're standing in Marshalls in line, right. Right. they'll talk to you. Especially if they're looking at a shirt. Oh, that shirt looks good. Oh, you know what? Let me ask you something. Right. I talk to people all, everywhere. Right. <laughs> right. But that's important. You have to. You, it's it's how people see you. It's how the public sees you. So if you want to get your, your little nephew to draw a little logo for you and put it on a card that you got from Staples or that you printed at home, that's what they're gonna look at. And they're not gonna find it. They're gonna look at it as cheap. Right. I mean, your nephew could be very good, but. Sometimes you have to put money into what you want. Right. And what you put out is out there forever. Right. It's out there forever. You can't take that back. So you want to be careful when it comes to those things. For right. sure. So the, so the branding no-no is, is, is... Don't let your nephew Ray Ray make you a, um, <laughs> make you a picture and put on, you know, print out your own cards. Right. If you, I mean, there's so many companies that do it professionally for like 10, 20... Thirty dollars. You right. don't. There's no need to do that. You just have to put the work in. Right. One of my favorites is Fiverr. Yes. yes. Fiverr. If if you don't know what Fiverr is, you need to download the app. Yes. Fiverr. I mean, there are so many things. Yes. That spell you it. Yes. F i v e r r. Right. Dot com. Yes. There there are so many things that you can get done on Fiverr. It's yes. amazing. Yes. Um, and I think that that is true. What you know you said about branding, uh, branding. Um, you know, even with being a real estate. First of all, you be surprised, amazed at how many women I talk to that have existing businesses, or just not women, just period. And I'm like, hey, have, are, have you branded? You know, how are you branding yourself? And they're like, what? Oh, I'm trying to. I, I, I I'm gonna apply for my tax ID soon. And I'm like, no, what? right, right. These are real how are things. How you in business and you don't have a tax these ID? These are real things. Listen, these are real things. These, mm. They're real things. And you know, um, but part of it is educating people. You just be amazed at how many, you know. I, you know, going, like I said, going into real estate, I'm like, okay, you know, that was always the discussion. I needed to brand my name. Yes. Right. Because I wanted my name. Go right. The go-to person, right. when they say, what do you want? Okay, I need to buy a house. Who, do I, who should I go to? You want them to say Melinda. Right. You want them to Melinda. say your name. That's right. Absolutely. So, what, the way you brand yourself, you have to make sure that you're out there. Don't be afraid to get on, and if you're afraid... Just jump on, have your friends, make it informal until you get comfortable to Absolutely. do something where you can be recorded in a, in a professional setting, you right. know, and do it. But you have to get out of your comfort zone. Right. That's the only way it's going to work. You can't be, 
this is not a comfortable position to no, be in. It's You'll not. never be comfortable. No. And if you ever get comfortable, you need to do something different. Absolutely. You need to step your game up. Right. Because you should always be uncomfortable. It makes you work harder. Yes. Yes. But yeah, branding is number one. Right. Because if you look at my brand, my brand represents me. When I walk out the door because I'm in beauty, I have to look the part. I would never go to someone who does hair and if their hair is right, if their hair is messed up, it looks like a rash says, I'm not going to them right. at all. I would never right. know. Right. And that and that's that's a that's a thing too, is not just branding your name, but branding your visuals. Yes, yes your outside, how yes. you look. Like when people see you, you know, do they want to do business with you? You know, mm -hmm. I, I was having a conversation with a young lady about a week ago, and I, I was like, "Look, you're in a, you want to start a business where you're asking people for their personal information. Do you, you have to appear as a person that they want to give their personal information to?" Yes. I said, "So you know what? It's important. I need you to go out, buy you two pair of slacks, three blazers." Like you don't need, you know. You to, don't need to go and buy right, a whole new wardrobe. No, but you and even if you wore the same thing over and over again until you can buy you a, a wardrobe. Exactly. When you go out into the public eye and you say, "Hey, I have this business," right? Then you need to. You have to look the part. Yes. Yes. You have I mean, to look the part. That's just being honest. That's being yeah. real. And so, you know, I'll never forget. This was years ago. I used to sell Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. Years ago, I love Mary Kay, <laughs> but I'll never forget watching Joanne Barnes speak. Um, I mean, she's really up there in the Mary Kay mm -hmm. world, and I, I just like her energy and her confidence. Like that was so beautiful to me yeah. because she said when she first got in the business, she said she just ran up to a woman and said, "Hey, you, you need to get to know me." You need to know who I am. Yeah. Right. And although she was not at that place yet, mm -hmm. it was like she spoke that. She yes. looked the part and she spoke the part. And I was like, you know what? That's that's what I want my approach to be. I want to be able to say, hey, you know what? You you need to get to know me. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. And this is what I can do for you. Yeah. And I exactly. believe that, that having that type of attitude, I believe that that's a form of branding yourself. It is. Right. It is. It is. Right. So... Um, I, I think that, like I said, that, that the branding is important and, you know, the big thing, like I, you know, that I wanted to share too, like I said earlier, was were, were some of the challenges and how it's easy um, uh, for us to um, look on, you know, the outside and, and so earlier we kind of touched base on it, but we didn't get too deep into it, but money management <sighs> oh my right. gosh. We kind of slid over that one. <laughs> yes, money management and the importance of managing your money. I know when I went to the Mobile Con conference a few weeks ago, which was mm. an awesome conference, um, you know, one of the things that um, uh, I can't remember who said it, one of the ladies or maybe one of the gentlemen, he said it. He said, let your job sponsor you your work like where you currently work mm -hmm. some people they want to get off their job they want to leave their job but they can't leave their job now and they and they go to work every day with these woes and this you know oh my god i can't yes. wait to get off this job <laughs> i'm quitting tomorrow That's what everybody says at least once a right. week right i, I don't want to do this yeah. but what they were saying was let your job be the platform to finance your your um, company yes. the, the the thing that you want to do but in the meantime and in between time because I can't speak for anybody else I speak for myself yeah. you know just deciding now I I stepped out on, on faith and just decided one day I wasn't going to work yeah right <laughs> but I know the type of person that I am I have that drive I knew then yeah. I was gonna have to hustle like I knew it was gonna put me in a position not to be sorry for myself but to, to hustle. Yes. Now, mind you, I haven't lost anything, but during that process, you know, I've had some challenges because I, yeah. you know, it was it was like three months later before you know I closed on my first house, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so there were some challenges there. There were some mm -hmm. struggles there, and these are the struggles that people won't tell you about. They won't talk about. Like I say, everything looks grand. Everything looks yeah. beautiful. Everybody's like, oh, you're doing so great. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you know. Yeah, you're like, okay, so I gotta get this. I have to make sure I get this done so this right. money comes in so I can pay this bill. Yes. Or we not gonna have this right here. Right. Um, I, I did the same thing. I did let my job finance my dream. I went back to school. 
and I went back to school. I was working full time and going to school at night. I would wake up at 4 a.m. and go to sleep at 11. I saw my son on the weekend, and he was just, he was in ninth grade when I decided I was going to do this. That was hard for both of us. You know, it was hard for me because I didn't get that much sleep. And the stress about not seeing your child when I'm the only one here, his dad is in Pennsylvania, I'm the only one here. He was a latchkey child. He had, you know, I'm, I cooked for him. I would wake, I would come home and I would cook enough for days or I would make packages where he could just put in a crock pot or whatever, or leave him money. I had a very good friend, um, Hannah. She's still her and her husband. He made sure my son was okay. My sister made sure my son was okay. She would come over and I had a support system, but it was still hard. But, you know, once I was done, and I decided I'm going to leave my job and go open this salon with no clientele. <laughs> like a crazy person, you know. It was, it was. That was it. No, no biweekly check anymore. You know. And people don't understand when you are so used to working. We live in a in a workforce society. Everyone works. Right. So when that check is no longer there, that security of that check, no matter if you're doing your job or not, but as long as you show up, you're going to get that check. When that's gone. That type of security is gone. That's a whole nother animal. Cause you, you thinking like you, yes. you wait stay up at night sometimes thinking, okay, so I gotta, make, I need to make sure I have to see four or five clients this week so I can cover my lease for my for my salon and the bills I have at home and and pay by food, gas, pay for my son. Like all these things come into play, and now I didn't just have the bills that I had when I was working. I doubled them. Because I have a salon now. Right. So it's it's different. Right. So, it, listen, it was a struggle. <laughs> it was a struggle. It's, I mean, it's still, a, it's a struggle. Right. You go through all these things and you have to be prepared for that. Right. Don't think that you're just going to get off. See, these girls, they, they think if they open a business, boom, they're going to be rich. Right. Right. It takes three to five years to build a business, people. Three yes. to five years to build a solid business where you are seeing a return you don't see a return the first year or the second year you're constantly making money but you're constantly putting it back in your business and, and educating yourself and learning new new applications um doing there's so much to learn and honestly there's not enough time in a day but you have to keep doing that because it makes it so you don't make so many mistakes right right so you have to keep educating yourself and you know people, people do say i don't want to put the money in but listen you're gonna put them you're gonna have to not do anything you're gonna have to not go on vacation you're gonna have to not go out don't party don't right. do these things don't go out to eat you're gonna have to learn how to budget your budget right. in general even when you get into the business you got to know how to budget because you see the money and then you spend it but what about your bills right. you, want? you right. know what I'm saying what about your bills for your employees or whoever you have to pay insurance like, this girl put something on Facebook she's a lash artist also and she said no, she's a nail tech. So she said, when you pay for your nails to get done, I think she's she's a little, she's on the high end, which is, if you want quality, you gotta pay for it. So I think it was like $75. But she says, what comes out of that $75 is her insurance, product, her lease for her space, um, gas money, and then she may get like $10 out of that 75. People don't, they think, oh, she charges too much. It's not that. But you'll pay for it from someone else, a big company, but you won't pay for it for a small business. Right. And that's the issue. You guys don't, people don't realize how much of the what you pay goes back into the business. Almost all of it, the, the person who's doing the service doesn't doesn't get that much of it. Right. And, and then you, and then even with that, you, you're, you don't even mention, you're not even mentioning the part where you've taken the money that you've made, invested it in something that's not worth investing and then so even within the business yeah right because you're trying to find you know a better product for your clients yes. or so a you're better way right. yes. you're, you're constantly testing things right, out right. and they don't all work out right i can count on it will take me both my hands both my feet to to see how many products i've gone through testing with to see what product works best for my clientele right and you have to do it things are always changing and you have to stay up on everything right and with real estate things are always changing you yes. have to know what people want and with the beauty industry, it changes every daily, right? Daily, so you have to stay on top of things. You have subscriptions to magazines. You have to watch all these different um, podcasts. They have educational, networking events. Like you have to do all these things and still run your business, right? So 
So it no, it is finances is very important. If you can find somebody to help you with that, I'm just gonna say <laughs> get them. You know what? <laughs> right, absolutely. And 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 that's another thing. Like you know, they say closed mouth don't get fed. Yes. And you gotta say something. You have to say something, and you have to be. And and with that being said, we're here to answer questions as well. If you have any questions. Yes. But uh, with that being said. You know, I think a lot of the struggles that we have as well are, you know, the fact that we don't we don't ask. We don't want to ask. I mean, we let we allow pride to get in our way. Yes. Um, and we don't want to uh, seek the help that we need because we have to have this image that, hey, we made it. And yeah. really, you know, we're hurting ourselves. The, you know, there's no longevity in doing it, no. you know, on your, on your own. But... Um, it's funny, even when you talk about the money that you spend, you know, and and you find your clientele, mm -hmm. the thing that concerns me as well is making sure that when you start a business and you put a business out there, that you don't do things the cheap way. Please don't. Like, I see $25 lashes running around here all Listen, the time. please don't. You get what you pay for, trust right. me. Right. Because I have had people come into my salon and sit in my chair saying they have a fill, and I'm like, okay. I know a lot of lash artists. I've, I've been in this industry for a little bit now. Um, and I ask them, where did they go? And they tell me, I'm like, okay. And I, pro and I tell them, listen, it's not guaranteed that I'll be able to do anything. I've had people who have had so much glue oh. on their lash line. It took me an hour, an hour, to get it off. That's a whole appointment. Wow. That is a whole appointment that I, that you know, I just had to give up because this person said that, you, oh no, no, I went to, or they'll tell me that they went someplace and they didn't go there because I could see the work. I know we know each other's work. Just like if someone gets a haircut and they say they went to this person, you know that person's work. You can't, you can't. Come on. Right. So quality. There's a big difference between trying to go cheap and then trying to, you know, get in quality. You can, now, I'm not saying go out there and spend a whole lot of money on this stuff that you have no idea what it is. But you have to start somewhere and do, it's cheap for a reason. They don't use quality ingredients. So you're wasting your money and it's not going to last you. Right. And your work could be beautiful, but it won't last. Right. It won't last. So, yeah, please don't, please stop um, getting these clusters, calling them individuals because they're not. They're clusters. <laughs> That's what they are. And what happens is they're so heavy, they snap your lashes in half, and then they pull. When you hear a pop, that's them pulling your lash out the root of your lash line. Right. Right. They'll pinch. It's, it feels like a pinch I've heard. That is your lash being pulled because if some are growing out, they're attached like three or four, and they're pulling it, and you feel a pinch, that's your lash. It's gone. Bye-bye. Right. I, I see one of the things that Tanya Montgomery said, um, is saying is it's always best to see their license qualifications before they complain about anything and that's very true too like yeah. you do you do want to make sure they're licensed because you do have a lot of unlicensed lash professionals yes. you know doing, <laughs> doing lashes in. and mind you now we're talking about lashes now because this is that's Serena's that's what specialty I but um, when it comes down to entrepreneurship, you know, it, it, she's well-rounded. Yes. Right, she's well-rounded. It, it doesn't stop at lashes. Um, but, yeah, that, I think that that is very important. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've got those heavy lashes before, like, where they put it in with the hair glue, <laughs> and then I'm sitting there, and I feel like I'm sleepy. Like, my legs oh my. are so heavy, and you I'm can. just like, my it eyes is. are exhausted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I've been That's there. True. I've done that. I, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> but, yeah, you do. You have to be careful. It's just, it's just, I mean, you don't get another set of eyes right so why take that chance you want to spend five six hundred dollars on a bundle and to put to install in your hair but something that you have to use every day to function which are your eyes you want to spend thirty dollars at the nail sh nail salon right now this is the question for all the independent lash um professionals out there charging twenty five dollars what is it that that you can say to them to encourage them to come see you or contact you on how to become true professionals and get paid for, for what it is that they do and stop bootlegging it, you know, with the $25 lashes. Yeah. So, you, hey, you guys, 
if you know somebody that's doing bootleg lashes, <laughs> tag them. Like, tag them in this video. Serena is here to help yeah. them. This is about entrepreneurship. This is not about putting anybody down, but this is about helping be people build their brand, build yes. a business, because for so long we've watched people start businesses and fail at businesses or just do whatever it is that they want to do and then they call exactly. it a business and we it look at them and we laugh right we laugh yeah. but i mean it's not a business this is a real thing so so tag a bootleg lash technician you know that who, you know is talented that's talented but not charging their work right How, uh, what would you like to say to the, those those I young would, ladies to those young ladies i would like to say listen um it is an art form and if you're good at $25 that that first of all if you're buying quality products there's no reason that you should be charging $25 when you could go anywhere to any major city and you may not be in a major city but the average is 125 to 175 depending on the type of lash there's no reason why anyone should be charging $25 right your time is worth more than that it takes you two hours to do lashes so you telling me that that's all you're worth it can't be. Right. It can't be. That's less than people make at McDonald's. It's, that's think of it like that. Right. If you think of it like that, that's what you're charging. Right. So, if you are willing to get educated, I mean, there, there's so much out there that you can learn. If you want to do lashes, I'm not saying going into all these other things. If lashing is your passion, you oh. need to educate yourself. If lashing is it's your, your passion. passion. <laughs> You need to get educated. You need to learn how to market yourself, how to brand yourself. And yes, if you go up on your prices, you know there's going to be people that you're going to lose. But let me tell you something. I don't want those people who don't want to charge my work. I worked hard for where I am. I spent thousands of dollars in education and things to get to where I am and to hone on my craft. If they don't want to pay, they're not my client. They don't have to be my client. They could, That's cool. I'm not for everybody, but there are a lot of women who love my work and come to me right. every other week, every week, every three weeks, whatever, whatever their schedule is. With me. But you, know your work. Right. Would you say you're more on the high end of yes. the lash industry? I'm definitely right. on the high end. You, and you mentioned know, know your work, know your clientele, know who it is that you're speaking to. Who is, yes. Whose eyelashes do you want to do? And I think, too, that, that that's another thing that we don't touch on, like, we think we just want every client or we have to accept every client yeah. just because we need the money. Like, Don't let do them money. talk you out of that. Right. Don't let them talk you down. This is not a negotiation. My prices are my prices. Right. That's it. Right. And people, when you pick, when you let certain people do that to you, that's just diminishing your confidence. Right. You can't demand what you need to demand. Right. So if you're charging, if you're charging $100 and then you go down to, you got to do a sale and you're going down to 75 85 65 dollars you cheat you're cheating yourself unless you're giving them like a, a, a what a, a express lash which is a half an hour but you're still cheating yourself right. you deserve more than that we work work a lot hard harder than average people right. because you're working for it solely for yourself so yeah. it's worth it the people will come and pay your price right they will come you may lose some people but let me tell you something they didn't see your worth so who cares <laughs> so anyway, I guess we can we can wind this up by letting everybody know once again where can they find you? They can find me at therockbeauty.com. You can send me an email by going to info at therockbeauty.com. Um, I'm in. If you want services, same website therockbeauty.com. So um, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and also um, Twitter. Great. Yes. Yes. And if you're looking for me, I'm Melinda Alford. You can find me um, on Facebook, Melinda Alford Realtor. I'm on Instagram. Uh, my email is melinda at smrealtyofsc.com. Uh, and if you...